and don't underestimate the importance of... Tight play control and solid level design. So back when I was a kid, we had The Little Mermaid for the NES, and I didn't play it too often, but every time I did pick it up, I really had a lot of fun. And because I enjoyed it so much, I decided to pick it up for the Game Boy. So I haven't played the NES version in quite some time, but from what I remember, uh, this appears to be an exact port. Same number of levels, and I think the same exact same uh, level design. Same enemies, same power-ups. Uh, yeah, a direct port. Uh, one thing that always stood out to me about the Little Mermaid, the video game, is that I always really appreciated the difficulty level. Uh, I never remember it as a difficult game, but every time I turn it on to play it, um, I always make it to the end, but, uh, and it's not a very long game, I always make it to the end, but it's always, it's still always a challenge. It's not like mindless pushing buttons, you still gotta think your way through it. And I always appreciated that. I don't know, in an era where uh, making it to the end of it, you know, back when games were NES hard. Uh, this is not Battletoads. This isn't uh, anywhere near Super Mario Bros. 1. Uh, you know, which is beatable, but man, you gotta get good to beat those games. This game is a lot more, a lot more of a casual, casual side-scroller, which I really appreciate. If you just want something fun and simple. Uh, this game does have uh, some unique gameplay. So, in a world full of side-scrollers. Uh, so, the fact that you're swimming and not just running is uh, a little bit unique. Um, this game's kind of like a precursor to Kirby. Did this game come out before Kirby? I don't know. Anyway, it's kind of similar to Kirby in the sense that uh, you can use your enemies, you can immobilize your enemies and then use them to attack other enemies. You trap them and you, what is it, you flip your fins as Ariel the Little Mermaid and uh, trap them in a bubble and then you can pick up the bubble and use it as a projectile. Kind of like how Kirby sucks up his uh, enemies and spits them back out. Uh, this game has some... <laughs> the graphics are, uh, are really nice. Uh, it has some really nice cutscenes, which uh, do a great job explaining the story. The story is kind of... Uh, it's a cute little twist on the story from the movie. What is it? So instead of, instead of just following the plot of the movie, it's kind of an alternate telling of the events of the movie, where Princess Ariel, uh, she's about to have her happily ever after moment but then, uh, whatever, Ursula, the sea witch, uh, takes over all the sea creatures in the ocean. So Ariel must turn back into a mermaid and, and work her way through an ocean full of, of hostiles and to get to uh, Ursula's lair and stop her. And I mean, and Ursula does the thing at the end where she grows giant, just like she does in the movie. So you get that big climactic scene uh, with, you know, with a little twist. And uh, I don't really mind it. Like, I'm not playing this to play the movie. <laughs> I'm just there for the, uh, the uh, Capcom quality gameplay, uh, the uh, good graphics, and the general story of the characters, you know, that people like from the movie. The graphics in this game, so the cutscenes that explain the story are really nice to look at. Uh, the sprites and the animation are really, really good. Unfortunately, uh, a lot of the choices with the, the palettes for this price, especially Ariel. Well, I guess Ariel and the enemies, the common enemies in the game, they are gray. They are sh kind of a dark gray. They chose to make them dark gray, and many times the characters are on a dark gray background. The backgrounds look really nice, but because of the uh, player sprites being dark gray on a dark gray background, it does make it, it does kind of muddy muddy the, uh, the appearance of the game and it can make it difficult to see what is where, especially on an original Game Boy. Which is too bad because I think if they just lightened, I think if they lightened, they kept a nice dark outline for Ariel, but lightened her colors inside, you know, kept it to uh, like a light gray and the white color, then it could have been a lot easier to see, I think. The music was really good, it's fun and bouncy. Uh, it kind of has a slight tropical feel to it. And I like that they included, uh, well, they got the one song from the movie, uh, Under the Sea, which just kind of, 
<laughs> just kind of plays anytime they need a, a reminder that this is the Little Mermaid, the game. Uh, which I appreciate. You know, there's movies where, where uh, this music, movies with very popular music that end up not having any of the music from the movie. You know, like Jurassic Park doesn't have the original games for the NES or the Game Boy don't have any of the music from the movie. Uh, I don't know, Waterworld. <laughs> so it's nice that they get some of the music from the movie. Uh, this game was actually developed by Capcom themselves. Uh, you know, Capcom published a lot of games, but this one was actually actually developed by, in, internally by Capcom. Uh, they also did the DuckTales port for Game Boy, which in my opinion was the DuckTales port. The NES game is one of the, I don't know, one of the best games ever made. Uh, the Game Boy port of DuckTales, I think, is one of the weakest, weakest ports. I think it could have been a lot better. This game is, uh, a lot nicer. It is, uh, right, so, as I mentioned, a direct port of the NES game. And I think they did a really good job. There's... <laughs> there's one strange instance where it looks like the frame rate kind of does something weird. It's hard to explain, but... Uh, when Ariel, the mermaid, the little mermaid, jumps out of the water, it, there's kind of this choppy, low frame rate effect. And likewise, when these octopus characters shoot some uh, projectiles out at you, I'm not sure why. Uh, it's not the worst thing, but it does kind of stand out. Uh, but all in all, really nice animation, really smooth. So, really not any complaints there. One of the first things I noticed when I started playing this, so as I, as I mentioned, I used to play this growing up, but it's been a really long time since I played it, and just kind of was going from memory. I remember there were supposed to be hidden items in this game, like hidden dingle hoppers and hidden snarf blats, but uh, I couldn't get them to appear. Uh, it turns out I was doing it wrong. Uh, my memory, I'd forgotten that you need to uh, put fish into bubbles and then launch them. There's like these gaps throughout the throughout the game, throughout the stages. You need to shoot projectiles, shoot enemies into the gaps, and a hidden item might appear. It could be a uh, you know a pipe or a fork, uh, which is just points, or it could be a, a small heart or a large heart to refill your health. That was kind of weird until I remembered how to actually play the game. The first time I replayed this game uh, this past week, the game's not hard but it does have some challenge to it, which means in one of the stages I did end up dying. And I was surprised to find out when you die, you go back to the beginning of the stage. Uh, I'm not sure why they chose to do it. I kind of was ready to whine about it uh, when I first saw it because, I don't know, seems like needless, uh, needless uh, padding maybe, or need needless punishment. But, you know, I don't know. I, I kind of appreciate it now. In part because I do want to. The game's not hard, and I do want to be able to get through the, the whole stage with uh, on just the hearts that you start with, the amount of life that you start with. And additionally, the, the stages really aren't that long, and so it doesn't it doesn't take that long to get through it. Um, I'd say this game is kind of what you make it. If you want to speed run this game, I don't know how fast it would be. It's well under 20 minutes, I believe, maybe even under 10 minutes if you just breeze through it. Alternatively, you can take your time, try to not get hit. I always like to try to play through and not get not get hit at all. Um, I don't think I've done that. Still trying. <laughs> uh, you can try to find all the secrets. There are... Right, as I mentioned, there's the secret items you can collect and try to get the most points. Um, the more you search, the easier the game will be. Well, is that true? The more you search, the more hearts you'll find, which will refill your health. Um, but some of them are tricky to get, and you can put yourself in danger, which can cause you to get hit. So, yeah, it's kind of a nice uh, trade-off. Try to get a lot of points, but risk uh, dying or losing health, or just you know swim as quickly as you can past the enemies. Oh, speaking of swimming, uh, I do like the play control in this game. So, as I mentioned, Ariel has uh, really nice animation. It's easy to see and looks good. <laughs> even even just standing there, standing there, even just uh, swimming in place. Uh, you know, you can see her uh, move her tail and uh, her hair uh, blowing in the in the water, whatever it is. It, it also do, they did this thing where uh, 
you know, normally in games like Super Mario, you turn left and right and you just instantly turn left and right. In this game, there's a turning around animation, which doesn't seem like that big of a deal, but it really does come into... It really does change, change the gameplay. You need to take that into account when you're swimming around. You can't just instantly turn left and right. If there's an enemy behind you, you have to take into, that into account that you'll need a little more a little more room to turn around in. So yeah, there's, there's just enough in this game. So with the, the different turning around mechanics, the swimming and not running and jumping, the... Uh, the whole shooting bubbles to capture your enemies and use them as projectiles. Being able to, you're able to jump out of the water and there's some, there's a few parts in the game, it's just enough, just enough to feel, uh, make it feel like a, a fun little diversion where you have to jump out of the water and flop around to get something you need. Five stages with five unique bosses, I think really, really make this a, uh, just unique enough to make it, make it its own thing. You know, I don't know, Smurfs, the video game, is side-scrolling, walking and jumping. Uh, you know, yet another one. But The Little Mermaid is uh, enough of a unique twist that I think it's worth checking out. I do think, I mentioned that uh, when you die, you restart at the beginning of the level. I think, I wasn't quite positive, I think if you die on a boss, then you restart at the boss. Um, <laughs> the bosses in this game, <laughs> they look amazing. There's some really clever bosses. I think my favorite is the stage two boss, the eels from the movie, electric eels. But uh, none of them, they're, they're probably the hardest boss. And everyone else is uh, incredibly quite simple. Um, so I really didn't die very much on them. I think if you die on a boss, you do restart at that, at that place again, as long as you have extra lives. So that's good. One thing that really confused me was uh, I was in level two and uh, right, so you can collect power-ups. So in addition to collecting lives and points, you can also collect power-ups for your fin to get more powerful bubbles. Uh, one of the power-ups will send the, uh, the bubbles farther, and the other power-up will be stronger bubbles. So you can capture bigger enemies and move bigger objects with the bubbles. Which is uh, neat, another neat little mechanic. Uh, one thing, uh, when you die, you lose all those power-ups. One thing that really confused me was, so I had, by the end of stage one, I had full, full power up, and I was all ready to breeze through, all ready to breeze through this game, and I ended up dying in stage two. Stage two is oddly difficult. Anyway, or maybe I'm just bad at that stage. Anyway, uh, so I ended up dying, so I get sent back to the beginning, and I now have no power ups, and almost as soon as you start that stage, you see a place where a power up is, but you're unable to get it because in order to get it, it's a power-up to upgrade your, your bubbles to the stronger bubbles, but you can't open it. It's a treasure chest. You can't open the treasure chest until you have stronger bubbles to, to kind of move a rock and bump the chest, which kind of ticked me off. Like, the game is not only punishing me by, you know, when I die, by taking away my power-up, but it's also... I can't even get the power up that they're that they're showing me. So that really bugged me, until until I realized there's also loose sand at the bottom of the ocean, and if you flip your fins through the loose sand, you can find other items. That uh, you know, and I found a uh, I was flipping through the sand, and I found a shell, which did allow me to get that power up at the beginning of stage two. So yeah, even though this game is really short and relatively simple on the surface, it really can be deeper or more involved if you want it to be. Uh, you can swim through the, the levels as fast as you want. You can search for all the items and secrets. It's kind of cool. Uh, even though there's only five stages and they're all relatively short, uh, there's a nice variety. The stages, the five stages have a nice variety. We've got, a, I don't know, the normal stage just under the sea. We've got a sunken ship, we've got uh, the ice level, a volcano level, and then finally Ursula's Fortress, which, <laughs> I don't know, it's kind of like a maze, but it's like, I don't know, baby's first maze. It's really not that complicated. And it all culminates with a, uh, a couple of battles with Ursula. And once again, they're really not hard, but they look really cool. They're fun. And uh, I don't know, it's just a feel good, kind of a feel good, uh, ending there. So yeah, in conclusion, 
This is a great game with enough, uh, it's a great side scroller with enough unique elements to it to make it worth, uh, worth checking out. It's short, uh, but can be more involved if you want it to, if you choose it to be. Uh, it's not hard, but it's not a walk in the park. Uh, the graphics are great with some eh, kind of difficult to see sections on the Game Boy version. Yeah, it's a short fun game with uh, enough unique gameplay elements to make it stand out. I recommend it.